Okay, good. All right, so uh, I'll give talk. Uh, unfortunately, because this scattering theory, uh, so uh, very heavy in mathematics. Uh, I don't want to get you guys totally tired or, or get bored. Uh, let's, we, we may just, it's a good idea to have some engagement discussions so that we can kind of relax a little bit. So you can stop me anytime if you have any questions and uh, we can discuss. Um, uh, I guess it's a, it's a good idea to understand the single size scattering first before we go to multiple scattering because a lot of concept we use, for example, T matrix, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, it just requires uh, the, the understanding of uh, single size scattering because that's a kind of basis. And uh, so hopefully from this talk, uh, you will see how T matrix is calculated. Uh, okay, so, so so we'll talk about how the single size scattering problem arises from our, you know, uh, uh, in the KKR method. Uh, then what quantity we really need to calculate uh, single size wave functions, uh, why it's, it's relevant. Okay, I'm gonna uh, uh, show something about this. And uh, uh, single size scattering matrices. So what those matrices we need to calculate. And the single side Green's function, I thought about I'm going to talk about it, but I'm going to maybe put some other time. Uh, I don't want to put too much mathematics, and uh, there will be uh, too much things. Uh, so we may think about something else. Uh, so I'll talk about how this quantity are calculated numerically uh, to get some understanding, how direct feeling about this, how this is in practice, how this is done, uh, because two two of the uh, postdoc in the audience uh, really. I need to know this uh, because this is kind of involved their work. Uh, so from solid to atom, uh, we'll go the other way around because usually we from start from atom to solids and try to understand the, the, the whole picture. But uh, it will be a good idea from the other way around in the point of view of multiple scattering theory. Uh, the original picture is we'll have a, a solid, right? But how come to back into the, the, the atomic and single side problems. So based on uh, uh, density functional theory with the LDA or GGA approximation, that enables us to find electron, uh, density, uh, electron density of ground state of solids, right? That's uh, what DFT is, uh, is about. Uh, so this is, uh, can be achieved by solving the cone chain equation, which is a one electron Schrodinger equation with effective potential, a V uh, effective, which uh, Marcus was, has talked about it last time. Uh, so we all know this, right? This is uh, so basically what happened is uh, in this picture we have a, a, a solid uh, can build as like an effective medium, effective uh, a potential, and uh, uh, with the ions in it. Uh, so that's basically the, the problem we're going to deal have to deal with. There's one electron being uh, uh, seeing this uh, uh, surroundings, so we need to solve this uh, uh, Kuhn-Shan equation, right? So in a multiple scattering approach, what do we do is we divide the whole space into domains. Each domain contains the iron uh, atom, right? So we'll, go, we'll make this kind of domain uh, around each of those atoms. So the whole space being divided into domains. Okay. Question: uh, The uh, this is uh, this example is one atom per unit cell. But what happens if you have more than one atom per unit cell? Oh yeah, yeah. You do the same thing. You just you know, the, the, uh, I'm not talking about uh, any units. Well. This, this atom could be different, different types. Uh, so it just generally speaking, it can just, we just divide the whole space into domains. Each domain contains at one atom. Uh, the atom, one each atom, atom could be okay. different. Okay. Yeah. So so these domains are not unit cells. These domains are actually somehow Wigner side atomic cells cell. or something uh, atomic cells around each atomic each cell. really each atom. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Atomic cell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I should have used different colors for uh, for the atoms so you can see. Mm -hmm. So they are not really pre periodic. Doesn't have to be periodic. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I should have used different color <laughs> because That's this color fine. can be confusing. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, yeah. so, in, so in principle, this doesn't have to be a periodic solid if that's what you're no, doing. Right? No, 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 no. Even doesn't have to be like a, a regular lattice. It could be, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it right. can be amorphous. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. Yeah, domain one omega, domain one, domain two, and uh, so on. 
and there's a you know pick up particular uh, domain all right so whole space is kind of made up of this atomic domains they don't overlap to one another but they fill up the whole space no gap okay uh, this is just kind of mathematical construction and you can imagine such a domain exist uh, but, uh, but you can it, it's you can do that all right there's no doubt about it quite obvious and and how, is, do we, how do we how do we define the domains the boundaries where where the how do uh, we yeah that's a, that's a good question uh, that, because in principle it's arbitrary uh, but usually uh, in practice <laughs> we do like a, um, a big size cell means we we can cut a, in between atoms in the middle but certainly it can give more space to give more weight to certain atom for heavy atom you can you, you can consider that because heavy atoms um, it should occupy larger space. So you can certainly just give it, you know, when you cut in between, but don't, you don't cut in, in, in between, but you can give uh, the heavy atom more weight, uh, you know, a little bit more space. Mathematically, it should be all equivalent, but in practice, could it be, uh, uh, make some a little difference because after all, we have to do in, things numerically, right? Uh, uh, but so far, we, we in, in general, we just put a, uh, uh, we construct the cells by uh, using big size uh, 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 criteria, uh, the, the uh, method, just put a, a plan in between. But basically, what, what you do is you're uh, um, uh, constructing uh, uh, the uh, Voronoi uh, uh, polyhedra centered around all the atomic uh, uh, positions. Right. Yeah. I mean, I could imagine what, uh, what Yang is saying that you we put these planes. Uh, be between these two atoms, but they don't have to be at the same distance between the atoms, right? The planes can yeah, be yeah, closer to one atom. That, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mathematically, it's should be in any way should be fine, so long right. as they all add together become the whole space, right? There's no gap in between. You can, you know, mathematically you can do that uh, any way you want. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so I then what I do next is I'm going to cut cut. So after I do this, I just I do this cut. Imagine we do that in, in, in our uh, in, we <laughs> we do in, in our imagination, all right? So it turns out when we, cut, we take out that particular cell, we examine it, okay? That domain omega n. So what's inside is just, you know, we just take that piece out and we look at it. So that the potential uh, we call Vn. So now this potential, what happened is, so inside the omega n, uh, because by the way, uh, in this domain, when I look at the potential itself, I will use the center of the cell to be our origin. So R sub n represents the vector, starting from uh, 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 the lattice vector, which is R and where the atom is located. R, capital R sub n, okay? So small R sub n is the kind of, uh, it's, it's a vector and uh, starting from the, the, where the atom is located. Okay, mm -hmm. this is my uh, 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 coordinates for the local coordinates. Uh, so that potential Vn is inside, it's just a, a effective potential from tangent functional theory. And the outside mm -hmm. is just zero. Okay. Right. So this is the kind of problem I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, same thing, we do this for every of each cell, okay? Now, obviously, because all the domain add together form the entire space, same mm -hmm. as for the potential. The potential itself we add together is the effective potential, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Yang, I have a question. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. So in DFT, we can't split the total potential into these uh, like atomic clusters, uh, right? Because the potential has uh, like, uh, so the V effective is uh, V uh, like the exchange correlation plus the electrostatic part and the electrostatic, yes. they have the long range. Uh, yes. Right? So how, how can you split this into this, uh, like the okay. sum of- Oh, okay. The this V effective, Includes mm -hmm. uh, the Hartree potential, which is in a row divided by R. That's a Hartree potential. 
plus the exchange correlation potential plus the uh, 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 ionic potentials. Means mm -hmm. all these uh, atoms in the space, they also can generate the, the so-called external potential in a in a in a in Kong Shen's term. Yeah. So, so e even though I mean you can't calculate uh, uh, the uh, potential just uh, locally, but uh, you still have a form of this uh, uh, potential that contains uh, the uh, um, electrostatic long-range interaction, and you still can cut it up into uh, into these uh, chunks. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah. Also, uh, still as a V of R, you cut it up in, into uh, these uh, local atomic cell uh, chunks, even though it arises uh, from uh, charge densities at a far away atom. Okay. Uh, so okay. this is just sort of a formal mathematical uh, decomposition. So, so basically the Vn uh, of the uh, nth uh, site, right, it, it's it, it comes from like uh, all the atoms uh, in the domain. It's, it, so it's not just due to the nth site. Exactly, yes. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, uh, another thing is, the, the, now the question is, how do you cal really calculate this VN, right? This local, this domain VN, because really it's a part of the entire uh, 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 potential. Uh, you know, we, we can talk about it some, some other time. Uh, it's, it, it can be done. <laughs> it is, uh, just remember that, that, that this VN essentially is just cut, cut out. <laughs> the effect of potential. <clears throat> so, so to make sure I understand. So uh, Kong Shan told us, if you know the profile density, they gave us a prescription, a recipe, how to compute V effective in principle. That's right, yes. That this is done. Right now we're solving a further equation for that potential. And this is a perfectly well-defined mathematical problem. We can use scattering methods to solve the Schrodinger equation or some other methods. Now we are talking about the, the scattering method, but but the EVF is given to us by Konshan, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, V effective is given by Konshan. But I just uh, kind of decompose this uh, V effective into local potentials. <laughs> okay. Now then, you if you ask me what's the recipe for doing this breakup, how how do you calculate the V ends? Uh, we can talk about them other time, but mathematically it is possible. It can. That's a, that will be. We can talk about in different topic. Uh, we can different time. We talk yeah. about how this VN is calculated in, in in practice. Okay. This is just demonstrate that it can be break up if V effective break up into pieces. Mm -hmm. in this way. Clear. It's very clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we treat the VN as a single size scaling potential. Okay. So the, the property of the single size scaling potential it's it's a local potential. Okay, it's it becomes zero outside the domain. It's it's not like a uh, it's different from like a one over r that the coulomb potential that it goes to all the way to the infinity. But the, our construction is such that it's a local potential. It's zero be, beyond omega. Okay, it's a local potential, local problem, and uh, yeah. all these Vn's sum together become the effective potential. Right. So this decomposition. Uh, uh, makes the, the multiple scattering theory whole thing will be possible. Uh, we can just, a lot of things mm -hmm. to derive, just build on top of this. Mm -hmm. All right. Very nice. Okay. Any questions? No? All right. Uh, so uh, from the, the single side uh, scattering potential, we can calculate single side scattering matrix. For example, the T matrix. All right. well, I'm going to talk about what T matrix is about. Okay, where coming from? But anyway, so I would like to imagine that geometrical shape of this single side potential. Uh, so in the full potential, uh, the, the potential I'm talking about is a very general. We call, we call full potential. Uh, so for called full potential is I'm not making any a shape approximation. It's just whatever it comes out from that effective uh, uh, DFT effective potential. It, 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 by construction, it just this is okay. This is called full potential. It's no 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 approximations made. It's just exact problem. Okay, uh, so it's it's a it's a it's a atomic cell. It's a it's a it's a, it's a Voronoi called a poly, Voronoi polyhedron, and we can draw a, a, a sphere, inscribed sphere. This is called 
buffeting sphere. Okay, we can also draw a, a bounding sphere, uh, R squared, R squared a, a sphere called a, circumscri a circumscribed sphere. So this has a radius RC. Okay, uh, it's a just a geometrical property. Uh, back in old days, we tend to use called muffling potential. That is, the potential is spherically symmetrical, and uh, potential becomes zero outside this uh, sphere. Uh, so original problem was like full potential. Then you can make approximation so that you can ignore the potential outside this muffling sphere, uh, treat them as zero. It's called muffling potential. Uh, I don't, but of course, we still remember that there's a domain out there. It's a, it's a, has a shape, uh, but the, in between, uh, it's called an interstitial region. That is between the muffling sphere and the, the, the domain. That region v is v potential is just zero. Okay, uh, so that's a, a, a muffling approximation. So, so Yang, are, there, are, there, are there physical examples where the, where where uh, this approximation fails badly? Do can you can you think of some examples where we really cannot ignore the potential v n uh, outside the muffing team? The, the typical problem is the semiconductors. When there's a mm -hmm. uh, when there's a covalent bonding, uh, mm -hmm. there's a uh, in principle uh, for 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 uh, uh, when electron sees in in the crystal field, uh, of course the, the, it's it's muffling problem. It seems like it's, it's a bad approximation, but seeing as in practice in KKR, uh, muffling potential was constructed with the uh, assumption that the child density is the is spherically symmetrical within the muffling sphere and the constant outside. So you can establish a variational principle to find a potential in this form. Uh, mm -hmm. So the fundamental something actually is the child density is a sphere is a spherical, and mm -hmm. the constant outside this is a sphere. Mm -hmm. And this turns out to be a very good approximation for metallic systems, for metallic bonding. Mm -hmm. It turns out uh, the child density it is uh, quite a spherical and symmetrical, and uh, it's a kind of very uniform in between atoms. So is this because uh, so of the, this kind of, uh, is this because of static right. screening uh, reduces the crystal fields? So the screening in the metal will will screen some crystal fields, which bring an isotropy. Is that the reason? Uh, I guess it's a more or less yeah. It's a, it's a screening effect. Uh, I think because electron in, in metals, uh, electron kind of can more or less freely moving around. Uh, it's mm -hmm. definitely screening, and uh, um, for forming. Uh, can, yeah, probably uh, that's a kind of important effect. Uh, but in the semiconductor, because of covalent bonding, electron has a very anisotropic uh, distribution. Mm. Um, so this kind of approximation becomes, becomes bad. But part of it also has to do with uh, uh, crystal uh, uh, symmetry. So, so mm -hmm. in a, a typical semiconductor like germanium or silicon, you're in a diamond lattice, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which has a, a lower uh, symmetry than. Uh, so, if you have a, a typical right. uh, yes. uh, uh, FCC or BCC, some uh, um, uh, higher symmetry uh, cubic material, uh, a sphere is a much better approximation. If you have a uh, the lower your symmetry, uh, um, the more you expect uh, 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 that uh, the uh, spheric uh, approximation is uh, right. probably not uh, not as good. Well, what do you mean by symmetry? There, the the diamond has only four neighbors, and the other ones have more neighbors, and that makes yeah. it more spherical, right? Makes sense. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Uh, we also tend to define something called a shape functions for domain omega n in the multiple scattering business and uh, people uh, use called a shape functions. Basically, it's just a, 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 a geometrical uh, a function that define that to be a function that is one inside the domain and zero outside. So it's a, kind of, it's a, it's a three dimensional step function. We know mm -hmm. one dimensional step function, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's zero. Uh, 
uh, on the left and the one on the right. It's a one dimensional, but that's three dimensional problem is that inside domain is one and outside is zero. So step function is kind of function we usually uh, use. Uh, we can, so sometimes it's called a, a step function. Okay, so it's usually called step function for, for the domain. Okay. Uh, So how we gonna from Kongshan equation? That's what, uh, what are we uh, uh, in a, a Kongshan equation in DFT in the atomic units. Uh, we write things like this, right? That's the Kongshan equation. V effective, uh, you know, that's what uh, Marcus talked about last time. And uh, alpha, uh, this effective potential. Uh, now according, according to our construction, we can write that. Vn, a uh, sum over Vn, which is gives right, uh, give right to uh, uh, V factor. And this alpha is Kongshan orbital index, which really includes both uh, uh, just, just band structures, uh, given K, which, you know, uh, N, uh, band, which band are you talking about? Well, that's kind of, alpha means the uh, Kongshan orbital index. Now, uh, we, in a, Multiple scattering approach, we first of all have to solve the single scattering problem. Uh, it is in order to uh, achieve our, uh, to, uh, to do the KKR uh, calculations. So we have to solve the uh, single type problem. So what single type problem we have to deal with? It turns out we do solve this kind of problem, okay? Now, the V here is that single side V. Remember that, that Vn is zero outside the domain. So it's a local potential, but this space is still out there. Okay, it's a large in the entire space, except the potential is local. It's zero outside domain. Okay, we're going to solve this kind of problem. And uh, phi is uh, is a single side solution. And now epsilon is continuous function. It's different from band structures. Band, the, okay, the difference between the band structure and this epsilon here is band in in a, in a crystal uh, in a for Kongshan equation for the crystal problem. It's a kind of like a, kind of like a, uh, it's called a block wave, or, or it's a sort of like a standing wave. It, it has to be a certain k. There's only certain epsilon will satisfy, will form the crisp, uh, the block wave. Okay, so epsilon essentially is a discrete, for for a given k. Okay, but now this for the single side problem. This is continuous. This is a spec, continuous spectrum. So epsilon is here is is a continuous uh, 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 quantity. A question: yeah. Why can't the single side potential not support also bound states like any atom? There could oh, be. Yeah, oh yeah, it's both bound state. Oh yeah, it puts both bound state. Yes, of course. Yeah. When epsilon is less than zero, when yeah. epsilon less than zero, yeah. uh, it forms a, a co the core electrons, core states. Uh huh. Core states are, are bound states. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll, make, I'll talk about it. <laughs> Mention more about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. epsilon is a positive. Is a is a is a is a is a is is a spectrum, it's a continuous uh, a spectrum from the continuous spectrum. But when epsilon is negative, there's only a few states are allowed, which are uh, 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 bound states and are cost, uh, or core states. Right. Okay. Because without the potential, you just have free electrons, right? With If you remove the potential at the end, then you have just free electrons, right? So that's just a, yeah. it's like an atom. It's basically a fa fancy atom. Yeah, uh, the, the difference between the, the the Vn and real atom is for the real atom, uh, the potential is only zero at infinity. Uh -huh. Sure. Okay. But here, Vn is a potential become zero sure. uh, 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 outside the domain. <laughs> so, of course. Right. Sure. Uh, sure. Okay. All right. uh, anyway, all right. so this is the kind of problem we're going to uh, need to solve. <clears throat> but wh wh why it's useful? Uh, okay. But anyway, the Vn is defined to be this way. That's what I have uh, by construction. Um, okay, so we have an L here, because I don't know what the, this L is. I just give an index here, just represents different uh, solutions. Okay, there's many possible different solutions. I, I put an L, L, for now, I put an L here to, I'm gonna talk more about this L, but for now, it, I just give it uh, just like similar to, likewise, just like an alpha here for the Kongshan equation. I give an uh, index called L and you call it orbital, maybe, uh, whatever, uh, L index to, to, to number the different uh, 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 solutions, okay? Uh, we're gonna see more what this L is. Uh, so for, for the bound states, uh, the core states, the, uh, we have 
uh, this phi will go to, go to zero as i n go to infinity. Okay. Um, so that energy has become discrete. Uh, okay. Now. Uh, so of course there are many many solutions for this uh, this one one uh, this uh, single side potential. Okay. Uh, so we are interested in so-called regular solution, which is finite at origin when I am approaches uh, uh, near uh, approach to zero. Of course, they form us complete solutions. Uh, that we can expand the the Kongshan orbital or the, the or the block wave in terms of single size solution in this domain. Okay, uh, the reason we can do that is because first of all, in this domain, the potential itself is just effective potential, right? By by construction. So it is possible in this domain we can expand the uh, 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 Kongshan orbital in terms of this single size solution in the domain inside the domain. For R inside the domain, we can do this in expansion. Okay, in principle we can do that, but in practice we uh, we use Green's function approach. But but anyway, so this by constructing it, it is possible, it can be done. All right, but anyway. Uh, there's another set of kind of solutions called the irregular solutions, which uh, when Rn approach to zero, the solution will become uh, infinite. That kind of diverge. Those are called uh, irregular solutions. Both regular solutions and irregular solutions are useful. They, are, they can be used to construct Green's function. We, will, we can talk about some other in the future, some other time. Uh, but here, we're going to focus on regular solutions. The regular solution can be used to 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 uh, uh, to expand the 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 Kongshan's uh, uh, block wave, Kongshan uh, orbital. Okay, by construction. All right. Uh, so this is how we're gonna gradually gonna see that why the single size scattering become uh, useful. So uh, we we see that we can calculate the single size solutions, which is phi, and and uh, that phi can be used as a kind of as a basis function, as a local basis function in the in, for omega n in domain n uh, omega n to expand the, the, the crystal wave functions, and also can okay, that uh, 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 this local solution phi phi n can be used to constrict to calculate the scaling matrix. Okay. Oh, what's going on? Uh, sorry, I, I messed up this slide. But anyway, I don't know why this slide getting. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. So I messed up this slide. Sorry about that. <laughs> so let's read this. Uh, so what do we have to learn in the modern physics textbook? <laughs> okay, if the potential is a spherical, that's what we have learned. All right. We usually deal with the spherical potentials in, in, in textbook problem. <laughs> so, for example, Muffetin potential, Vn. Uh, this uh, this uh, is uh, a spherical. Uh, we like spherical potentials because spherical potential allow us to do the variable separation so that single size solution can be written as a radial function multiplied by the spherical harmonic, which is a function of the orientation. Okay. And this r hat, because uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a it's a unit vector for, uh, uh, for Rn. And only shows only the direction matters. Okay, only function of uh, uh, directions. Uh, so the, the radial part is uh, is represented by this phi. phi I, I have hard, hard <laughs> I have trouble to uh, to pronounce the Greeks. <laughs> I don't know which is phi or which is phi. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know that. Uh, let me know. <laughs> uh, which one? Uh, let me see if I can use. Uh, do you see my mouse? No. Yeah. Uh, oh, you see my mouse. Okay. Uh, that, that's uh, that's uh, that's a phi. Actually, both of them are phi's. One is a oh, lowercase. Phi. One is a lowercase. One is an uppercase phi. Oh, so they're all lowercase. Uh, well, you know, in in Europe we say phi. In 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 the English they say phi, but this the, just the, you know it's an f. It's a Greek f, right? There is no. Phi and phi, right? Yeah. Oh, it, Europe, no one has heard of phi, right? So, 
Are these two the same? Same thing? Uh, yeah, one is lowercase, one is uppercase, basically. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So they end up the same thing. Okay. I can all code. Anyway, so this single size solution can be written as a radio function multiplied by a spherical harmonic. Okay. That's what we do in the textbook, modern physics textbook, not even the quantum mechanics, but modern physics. We can do that. So, uh, uh, I as a unit vector. Oops, sorry, sorry, I, I jumped too much. Uh, okay, anyway, so we now associate with, uh, what we learned is we associate this L with this little L, which is, uh, 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 this is a combination of uh, uh, orbital angular momentum number, quantum number <coughs> L and the magnetic quantum number M. So now we can associate this capital L with this uh, little L and M here. Okay, so. Uh, because of uh, we can do that, uh, so we can uh, this can be further uh, the single side solution for the spherical potential. Uh, the single side uh, Schrodinger equation for the for the spherical potential can be reduced to this radial Schrodinger equation, right? That's what we have learned in the textbook. It becomes this. Okay, essentially yeah. our goal is to solve this kind of problem. Uh, this capital L. Uh, but in practice, we can number as one, two, three, four, corresponding to zero, zero, one, minus one, uh, one, zero, and one, one. And this, the, the, the first number is the little L, and the next number is a little M. Okay, so that's in practice, that's what we do. Now, uh, so for the scanning theory we taught in quantum mechanics book, uh, assuming that also we assume uh, spherical potential. Okay, that's because it's easier to deal with. Uh, so spherical wave, remember that spherical wave in free space, uh, this we have to refresh our memory, what uh, we know, or maybe we have forgot about it, uh, is which is a solution of uh, free space string equation where V equals to zero, right? So there's a set of different uh, solutions for that representing the, uh, the uh, free electron uh, uh, wave function. Uh, the, there's, a, there's a standing wave solution uh, J times Y, Y spherical harmonic. J is spherical basal function. Uh, you don't have to worry about what J really look like. It's a special function, but just remember there's a, uh, there's a standing wave solution uh, it's called spherical basal function, which is zero at infinity from the uh, uh, standing wave. Uh, it's a, okay. uh, there's a also called an outgoing wave H. It's a spherical Hankel function. But you don't have to worry about what you know how to calculate edge, but you know just just remembering this fact that's good enough. Uh, there's a spherical hang of the, of the first kind. There's another one called the incoming uh, spherical hang function. It's called second kind. Uh, difference is uh, that superscript has plus, and the, uh, then the other one superscript has a little minus here. Uh, they, they differ in the way in, at the, the behavior at the infinity. Uh, why? H plus is called a uh, outgoing wave is by looking at the uh, behavior at the uh, infinity. You see this exponential has this things and uh, H inverse at the, uh, uh, at the infinity uh, exponential has a negative sign here. That's why uh, you can use apply this called a, um, in quantum mechanics this is called a, a current operator. You can use current operator to operate on it. You can figure out what's the current. You can figure out the direction of the current go, right? For this one, uh, the, the uh, you can, by apply the current operator to it, you can figure out is, you know, the current going outward. So we call outgoing wave. If you operate current vector, a uh, current operator on this function, you'll find the current, the direction of the current going inward. That's why it's called a, a, a incoming wave. That's why this name coming from. It represents the spherical wave, represents the different uh, direction of the traveling. Okay. Uh, so this is a little bit heavy in mathematics, but just I think that's good enough. We, we know all this. Uh, so there's a, another solution for the free electron solution is a, a plane wave solution. We all know that, right? It's simple, and uh, can be written as a income as a, as a solution as a sum of incoming and outgoing spherical waves. Okay, this is just a mathematical construction. This this just equ this equation this equality. It's just. Uh, uh, identity uh, expression, right? This kind of expansion can be this just simple mathematical uh, uh, statement. Uh, so essentially, it's just kind of sum over 
incoming and outgoing wave. So in generally speaking, for any like a solution in uh, for given potential, so it should be can be represented as uh, like an incoming wave plus outgoing wave. Uh, so this kind of statement is generally true. But anyway, uh, so for plane waves can be written as incoming wave and outgoing wave uh, together. Now, uh, we can look at the properties of that to the uh, uh, infinity, how it looks like by using this uh, behavior of uh, this uh, spherical Hangul function. So this can be written this way, right? Uh, actually, this has been talked about in, in scaling uh, theory chapter in quantum mechanics book. Maybe we all forgot about it, but I just kind of refresh, <laughs> review what uh, is in the textbook. <laughs> okay. So you may wonder where this little L pi divided by two is coming from, right? Uh, so it turns out it is the effect of the uh, this L times L plus one divided by R squared term, this effect. So essentially what happened is when you look at the, the, the Schrodinger equation. This is just a simple mathematics, uh, uh, mathematical result uh, in addition to the potential. Of course, uh, for, 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 for free electrons, for free particles, the potential is zero. But generally speaking, they always, this term always true. It's a kind of mathematics. So this term, this kind of just look like a, a term, just like an extra potential added to the equation. So that term really causes this uh, phase shift. Where is it coming from? Okay, so you can imagine that if I apply a potential to it, so what's going to result is going to cause a phase shift. Okay, so th th this kind of this can be treated as a, as a as a potential effect regarded as a potential, and that potential will drag the wave function uh, cause a, a phase shift. So by this thought, uh, if the potential is is applied instead of the free electron, but rather if a potential uh, it, uh, is uh, applied, the wave function will, at the, at the uh, uh, infinity, well, all what's going to happen is we're going to add uh, 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 a phase shift in addition to the <laughs> a odd pi divided by two, okay? I'm going to add a phase shift to it. it this phase shift is caused by the potential. It's the effect of the potential. Okay, this is just simple physics argument. Of course, I am going to add another uh, 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 pre-factor here, just kind of uh, try to normalize the uh, wave function. So this is kind of, uh, I'm going to kind of arbitrary uh, uh, number as a uh, kind of combination uh, uh, coefficient. Okay, so this by construction, you can write this this way, right? This is how uh, this phase shift is introduced. We call partial phase shift because this is a sub L for each L, I'm, I will introduce this phase shift, the effect of the different Ls, okay? Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, I can think about from different angle that the potential, the effect of the potential is effect on the outgoing wave. So I can multiply a factor called S to the outgoing wave term, because this is the incoming wave, this is outgoing wave, when I apply potential to the problem, uh, uh, to, to this uh, 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 physics, what's going to happen is the effect will be the pure effect of the potential is to modify the outgoing wave. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to multiply this uh, number to the uh, to the outgoing wave. So that will the construction of it, it, it will represent the uh, the wave function. So there's two ways of looking at this problem. One way is looking at the problem from uh, applying a, a phase shift. Another way of looking at the problem by modifying the outgoing wave. Okay, either way, they should be equivalent. So I make them to be equal to one another. Okay, so this is a kind of a factor uh, prior to the outgoing wave. Uh, so I call this S matrix. Uh, why is this, uh, this is just number? Uh, I can construct a matrix by looking, put this number in the diagonal. Uh, I can construct, construct matrix, but of course it become a, it's a diagonal matrix and uh, for the L and all the L and M's arranged in such a way that it forms a matrix. So this is from this called the S matrix. Uh, Yang. Yes. Uh, so what happens to the JL? So you have JL. a JL, right? It's the spherical standing wave. Oh, so no, no. It's, yeah. Uh, well, uh, 
there's no J over here. Uh, actually, H contains J. So there, there are um, always uh, two independent uh, sets of uh, uh, solution to the um, uh, um, uh, to the uh, Coulomb wave equation, which basically uh, gives rise to that. Uh, one are the uh, uh, spherical uh, uh, Bessel function uh, J and the spherical Neumann function N. Uh, and uh, another set, which is like, which you actually can write as linear combinations of J and N are uh, the Hankel function H plus and H minus. Uh, so uh, basically J can be written as a linear combination of the H plus uh, and the A H minus and, and vice versa. Yeah, uh, actually, that's right. Uh, actually, actually uh, H minus plus H J plus H minus a plus H J plus is a J. Is J. I just didn't. I did not write J here. Uh, see this here. This is the J. Okay. Uh, the reason I want to write this way because I try to make this argument <laughs> because the way I want to write H and, and H minus and H plus here because I want to show physics meaning of it. It's because it's one is a incoming wave, another is an outgoing wave. Yeah, you can choose. You can choose to write this as J. Yeah, this is J. And uh, it's a it's a it's a J times two, I think. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. J times two. Okay. But anyhow. Uh, so by this, com we can compare these two things. You can obviously determine that S equal to E to the two times I to the eta this is a phase shift. And A, this capital A, this coefficient is given by that. Okay, it's just simple algebra you can easily uh, uh, look at, uh, uh, find, find it. Okay, so we can associate S matrix with a, a phase shift. So if now I remember I can... correctly, uh, so if you, if yes. you have just a 1D problem, for example, you have the left wave and the right wave, right? You have to superimpose them in a given fashion to uh, obey boundary conditions, whatever they are, right? The same thing here. Here you have boundary condition at the origin, right? Yeah. So you have the incoming wave, the outgoing wave. These boundary mm -hmm. conditions will differ when you have a, when you change your potential. Mm -hmm. But the linear combination of the incoming and outgoing wave has to be adjusted so that you can match the boundary condition at the origin, right? That, isn't that, is, is that correct, the, the way to look at uh, it? Yeah, we try to, uh, we, we're not talking about the boundary condition at the origin, actually we talk about the boundary condition at the infinity here. Well, at the infinity, this is where these waves are defined. I mean, they are, they are, yeah. they are, they be, they're reduced to these plane waves, but at the origin, the, 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 the behavior of the origin is modified by the potential. At the, at the infinity, it's just the phase shift that's changed, right? But the, yeah. the origin is actually the whole wave function changes somehow, right? Yeah, the, the just... origin is kind of yeah. Uh, it's difficult to see here. Uh, it's not quite clear yeah. uh, what's going, what's the behavior at the, and the near the origin. Right, 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 uh, right. Yeah, because the incoming wave really, uh, yeah, incoming wave uh, really it become a, 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 a irregular. It's a irregular solution near the origin. It become diverge for the from the incoming wave coming into it. Right. But we, we, we tend not to talk about the, what happened in the origin, but we, it, it's easy to see things in the, you know, when, when at the infinity, uh, the right. wave function should match. There's two different approaches. Okay. So when, they, when, they, when, they, when, they, when we match them, so that's what we, we can associate with S matrix and the eta, uh, the wave phase shift. So this has been taught in quantum mechanics book. But anyway, uh, we have forgot about it. I just kind of review what we have learned. Okay, kind of refresh our memory. Uh, a, a lot of situation is we don't even even our teacher don't even bother talk about it <laughs> because we think it's not useful. <laughs> it turns out to be very useful in KKR method. <laughs> okay, now we can write S matrix as one minus two i squared of epsilon times this matrix this t. We can write S in terms of this. Okay, so if we do that, uh. It, the, the purpose of doing that, what end up this wave function becomes 
uh, uh, plane width plus uh, another term. Okay. Uh, this is just simple algebra. You just, all you have to do is just put that inside here and uh, use the this math this mathematical uh, formula. Uh, you can get the, the first term, which is a plane wave, plus another term. Okay. Uh, so T, as you have guessed, it's called T matrix. Uh, it's because you know you, you guys simply just derive that because we know S equals this, you can write figure out T is equal to this. Okay. Uh, that's basically being taught in uh, 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 quantum mechanics book, but also I want to mention that this quantity, uh, this minus sign uh, multiply with this t, this whole thing, uh, it, you see, th this second term is look like a outgoing wave, right? And this e is a, is a, is a kind of a plane wave. So if you look at the scanning uh, problem in a textbook, we usually talk about is a plane wave plus a scattered wave. Uh, this uh, we usually use called a uh, scattering magnitude. Sc scattering amplitude. We define the F. That's if we can try to refresh our memory, what we have learned in, uh, about 30, 20, 30 years ago, or maybe 10 years ago, depending on what your age. Uh, this is called F is the scattering amplitude. You can, from this expression, you can immediately see that scattering amplitude is just a T matrix, a uh, uh, put a negative uh, sign in the front. So that's just a scattering amplitude, okay? But anyway, so I, I just try to go over what we have learned before. Uh, mm -hmm. That's so far, that's what we have learned. All right, mm -hmm. uh, now partial wave phase shifts, that eta is partial wave uh, phase shift. So it's easy to obtain uh, the scattering amplitude and the phase shift uh, from this, okay? So T matrix, I just, I just copy over from the previous slide, the amplitude square is the amplitude. It's essentially just a T, T square, a T matrix amplitude, uh, which is equal to this, okay? I think that's enough for the uh, uh, scattering amplitude. That's not really our uh, concern is. Now, we talk about the T matrix. Uh, so we form a T matrix by, I put that as a, a diagonal element. Uh, the, the reason we have all these things because uh, potential is, a sphere, uh, is spherical. So that we, we can have a clear definition of uh, a partial phase shift. Uh, a scaling matrix, T matrix is a, diag is, is a become a, a degenerate for different M's and it can construct a kind of diagonal matrix in this way. And, uh, but this, uh, this is an interesting uh, feature about this scaling amplitude is that this, when eta, is equal to pi over two, uh, multiples of pi over two. And this become a, 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 has a maximum value. Uh, so the amplitude is, is the highest. So when energy, uh, for given certain energies satisfy this, uh, the, uh, these relations, we call this energy called a resonance energy. So uh, which implies that at resonance energy, the electronic scanning states have high prob probability and, and uh, uh, it turns out it, it will form a high density of states around resonance energy. Uh, so the, the, the uh, near the resonance energy, the density of states usually form a Lorentzian function. Uh, this is kind of, uh, the, the width of Lorentzian function is called a, a, a life, uh, lifetime by uh, Eugene Wigner. Uh, now let's consider the inverse of the T matrix. So we have by just take the inverse of this quantity. Uh, okay. When I say I exchange the word inverse of matrix, uh, T matrix or inverse of this quantity because this is diagonal. So I can you know, either way, uh, this statement is still fine. Uh, so you can write that down e to the i minus i to the eta. Okay, write that down as cosine. It, 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 it just make a little uh, 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 algebra that you can, you can find this expression, okay? So you have a cosine and a sine here. Now I can define 
I can call sign this uh, from a diagonal uh, a matrix called a sign matrix. And I put cosine eta, and this is just like a T matrix. I it forms a, a diagonal matrix called a cosine matrix. So I have two different matrix. One is called sine matrix, another is called cosine matrix. So this expression can be written in the matrix form. Okay, so T matrix inverse can be written as I times square root of epsilon minus square root of epsilon times C, the cosine matrix, times the inverse of the sine matrix. All right, uh, this is not taught in textbook, unfortunately, <laughs> that's, but that's become very useful for, for us. So our goal is to calculate cosine and sine matrix, turns out to be can be calculated, and then we can calculate T matrix. Okay, I'm gonna show you more about this. Uh, I did slow down a little bit, uh, but anyway, so the time is constrained. Uh, so any questions so far? Okay. All right. Uh, so the, uh, yeah, the, I let's have, talk about something uh, that's more interesting. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. I had just uh, one small question. So uh, this T mat so this is the T matrix you talked about here. And we also have another way we define T matrix in uh, for disordered system in locator approach. Uh, in in the when we formulate uh, CPA Green's function, so like yes. uh, we expand the uh, Green's function in terms of a locator, and then there we define a T matrix. So this is the same T matrix both way at the same. Oh yeah 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 the same T matrix yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, maybe sometime in the future I'll talk about the connection of T matrix with Green's function. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Actually, the way I learned is that in the Economos book, uh, Green's function in quantum yes. physics, he first starts with the continuum scattering T and the Born approximation and so forth, phase shifts and so forth. Then he goes yes. to the tight binding model and he yes. explains how the T matrix, in fact, it's very similar because the, the there's a, he's talking about the scattering from a single site in a periodic system first, right? That defines a single site T matrix. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for for given one site, right, and then there's a T yeah. matrix for the all the sites, which can be exp exp uh, exp expanded in terms of the individual T matrices. But these yeah, T matrices right. that really yeah. represent these, uh, I think these all, are the, 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 yes. uh, all the all the scattering information absorbed there. Right. So I really like this. I was not familiar with this. This is very educational for me because I can see that the the idea there in the column book they say if you have a potential only on one site. Then the T matrix is a matrix which is has no zero matrix elements only on that site. But obviously, if you have say a potential on, on five sites, the T matrix will also have be non-zero on the on the in the finite volume. Then we can now do this in a finite volume where we can put uh, more sites, but uh, in a finite volume, then it seems that the T matrix would be non-zero in that volume, but outside it will be everywhere zero, right? So it has the same physical meaning. I really like this. So it kind of, yeah. it, it's, it's, I can already see how it's connected to, this is a good, uh, interesting comment you're making about SIM, that there is actually a simple connection between this. Uh, we, I also, you know, I have never worked with a continuum like this, but I worked with tight binding models and then uh, we're all familiar with uh, this uh, T matrix defined on tight binding model more than this, but I think they are closely related. Yeah. Thank you, Ian. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about something interesting. Uh, the physical meaning of pi of phase shifts, which is not taught in quantum mechanics book. All right, I can. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, example of calculation. I pick up a copper atom. Remember that uh, I pick up the copper, take a copper atom out of the copper metal. But the way I take it out, it's not a, simply an atom out, but rather it's a local potential. Remember that the local potential means outside the domain atomic cell potential is zero. Okay, that's kind of top potential I'm talking about. That copper atom, uh, that piece of potential, I calculated to phase shift. So that's going to look like. Okay, <coughs> you see that there's a kind of jump to from zero up to th this a particular a l equal to two, which is called on the d uh, d uh, d wave uh, d partial wave, uh, almost to a uh, uh, pi. Okay, uh, I, I'm okay. Sorry, my delta and the eta is the same thing here, but I, I because the picture was this this curve was drawn some years ago. I use delta here, but now, now, this is a phase shift, right? So this is kind of S phase shift, P phase shift, um, uh, D phase shift. 
All right, so I, 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 I plot this. And although this uh, other partial phase shift, I mean, you probably won't see them because they are essentially zero. It's just little, very, very, very little. You don't see very, not very obvious. But anyway, uh, so this is kind of simple uh, 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 plot. All right. Uh, so this is how it's going to uh, look like. Uh, so the uh, remember this resonance I, I was talking about around when uh, the phase shift around the uh, pi over two. This is pi. So pi over two is around here. So this is about energy where the resonance is. Okay. And obviously, when you take a derivative of this function, it becomes very sharp peak. Okay. That's what I have done. Uh, I, I took the uh, uh, derivative, it becomes this uh, blue curve when I this plot. By the way, this delta and this delta, this is partial, this is partial. And this delta is the sum of all the, all the partial wave, a partial uh, uh, phase. Mm -hmm. This is sum of all the partial phase, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can, because this, this curve it dominates much more than all the other curves when you make summation. So the shape will more or less look like a D, uh, 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 D wave, D partial wave. But they all, you know, it's all just some, uh, some, uh, some of them all together. So it look, this is a blue curve. And this is a, a red curve. It represents the uh, sum of the uh, partial phase. And uh, this blue curve is the derivative of that. It, 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 it's, it's kind of very sharp peak here. What does it look like to you? Does it look like, You can, can you imagine what this is? <laughs> it is a density of states. Mm -hmm. So there's a connection of partial, this connection between phase shift and density of states, it turns out. And uh, so this is kind of, uh, uh, sorry, I just try to say my eta and the delta is the same thing, okay? My, 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 I just totally messed up my plot. Uh, one is done some years ago and the one is <laughs> This is a slide, uh, so I, anyway. So anyhow, the eta data means they are just phase shift means. All right, so basically the conclusion is the eta divided by pi is the additional individual density states in addition to the free electron density states, okay? So the, uh, the uh, so that's got kind of physical meaning. The physical meaning of the uh, phase, partial phase shift is integrated density states of that given particular uh, uh, channel, L, the integral density state relative to the uh, 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 free electron density states. That's kind of, that's just simple uh, uh, physics of the uh, 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 phase shift, okay? Which is, for some reason, textbook is not <laughs> talking about it. Uh, so then pi, when let epsilon equal to zero, Pi, uh, eta zero divided by pi is number of uh, 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 integrate density states up to integrate density states up to energy equal to zero, right? What's integrate density state up to equal to zero? Which is the which is essentially just a number of electrons below the energy uh, zero, which is just bound states, number of bound states, right? So basically, it's just a number of core electrons. This turns out to be there. There's such a thing actually. This statement is available in in, in scattering theory book. It's called Levinson theorem. Levinson theorem tells uh, that the phase shift. It, it tells you how to count number of uh, bound states. It's related to the to the uh, uh, to the phase shift. So basically, this is a kind of statement of uh, Levinson theorem. But this is a more general statement. It turns out it's not doesn't exist in scattering book, uh, in the scattering uh, theory book. Okay. What I find a little confusing here is that you talk about core electrons and valence electrons as, as if they were kind of different things. But from the point of view of Bloch's theorem, uh, they're, they're not different in a solid. I mean, you have bands and it's not completely obvious to me how you split the bands into what you call core, core and not core, right? I mean, they're, they're all bands and they have gaps. So, uh, you know, because I understand it for free electron with one local potential scattering problem. Either you have a bound state or you have a scattering state. That's a clear cut distinction. But once you're in a solid, then then in the conduction, the, the scattering states also start can start opening some gaps. And so then you have discrete bands everywhere. It's not, I, I, I don't understand. 
you know, in a solid, how you clean, cleanly can separate into bound state and scattering states. Uh, okay. Uh, we try to view the things in a, a unified picture in terms of a scattering mm -hmm. uh, theory. Uh, what you can see is actually the bound states and uh, uh, resonant states, they're all the same thing. Uh, it turns out. Uh, in, in, a solid, in a solid, right? Uh, no matter what, uh, in solid or not. Uh, uh, it turns out, let me put it this way. Using mathematical term, the bound states and resonant states are all the poles of the S matrix. Yes. If you know the poles of S matrix, you essentially find that the bound states or resonant states. The, right, the location of the poles right. it determines whether it's bound. Uh, okay. The bound states is that the density of states is delta function. The resonance is the density of states is a kind of like a Lorentzian. It's, it's a height of width. Um, the, uh, the bound states is such that the energy is below zero. The resonance states are the energy is above zero. But right, right. Uh, it's uh, for the single side. But in, in, in the solid uh, case, uh, situation is a little bit more complicated because you, call, you can view them as still view them as a kind of uh, uh, standing wave that for the bound state, st the standing wave are uh, constrained in the local region. In the, uh, then the, the, uh, the valence states are still considered as a standing wave, but it's extended for the entire crystal, but they have, they're constrained by the periodicity. It form this, uh, the, the whole crystal will have a constraint on the wave function. So it has to follow this uh, periodicities form this kind of uh, block wave. Uh, this kind of periodicity condition applies so that it forms some, this kind of station, uh, this kind of uh, standing wave. Um, can we just say that, of, if, if, can we just say that if you take a, if you have one bound state of, say you solve you sell, take one cell and zero outside, you form a, find yeah. the bound state, right? Then okay. you actually add other cells. What will happen is that these were the, the, the wave, I mean, these bound states coming from different cells will start overlapping now and they will broaden into bands. And that's the reason why these bands, they're all the bands there. There is no, I mean, this, this distinction between bound states and scattering states becomes blurred in a periodic solid in a single cell case, it's not blurred, right? Uh, uh, but, but well, uh, but see, it's still depending on the, the, the energy level. For if energy uh, uh, level is low enough, the, your forms are like a core state. It's still inside. Uh, it's a bound state. It's a still bound state within uh, each atom. Uh, then for high energy levels, which will form the valence, is that the, uh, they're not bounded by the local atom, but rather they will hybrid with the neighboring uh, atoms. Uh, if but isn't the, it true that for core states, you really, you don't have delta functions. You really just have very, very narrow bands. You always, I think you always have bands. You never have a really a, a discrete levels, right? Uh, theoretically speaking, right? Except that they're extremely narrow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if you, you, you yeah, in pro, okay. Uh, well, what you're saying is true that because in principle, there's a crystal out there and the, the electron, even though the energy is, a, is very uh, low and negative, in principle still sees there's a, there's a crystal field out there, right? Uh, but in practice, we don't treat things that way. We still treat as single size problem uh, to solve the core states. We still treat it uh, to solve the bound state problems. Um, Otherwise, it will become extremely difficult to, to solve the uh, all the deep core states. You, you don't want to introduce all the uh, crystal weight. Uh, you don't want to let it to see all the other uh, atoms, uh, all the other electrons out there in other atoms. Uh, that become uh, difficult. Okay. But anyway, uh, so basically, that's the kind of uh, a statement of the uh, it's a meaning of uh, uh, phase shift. So it's relevant to density states or integrated density states. Uh, so, uh, how do we calculate uh, phase shift? It turns out it's not as simple, uh, uh, but it turns out we can calculate the S matrix first and then we determine the phase shift, okay? And, and putting the matrix 
uh, uh, form, uh, the phase shift turns out can be written this way. All right. Uh, why this is useful? Uh, okay. Uh, before I say that, we got now the T matrix is uh, this is kind of copy from a previous slide, and uh, uh, the T matrix can be written in this form. Uh, that's I think I showed this already. Uh, in, if you you know you can calculate S matrix, you can calculate T matrix. Uh, okay, but problem is all what I've told so far and the, and the, the slide before, uh, we assume that the, the potential is a spherical. So that we can separate the single side wave functions into radial term uh, and the spherical uh, 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 harmonics. So uh, we have a clear definition of phase, a partial phase shift and the T matrix is diagonal, S matrix is diagonal. Uh, we're all happy with it, but in practice, in general, potential are not spherical. And what we're gonna do with it. Uh, and also the partial phase shift become a problematic because there's no partial phase shift anymore. Uh, that we cannot define partial, that all the treatment we have so uh, will not be valid in this case. Uh, so fortunately, we can still we can still uh, calculate T matrix and S matrix, even though we don't have phase shift. Uh, so now, in that case, uh, we can define the uh, uh, generalized phase shift by using uh, using this formula. Okay, uh, uh, and also we can uh, uh, by using this fact that actually S matrix turns out to be unit unitary. Even though we calculate generalized S matrix, we can diagonalize it because it's a unitary matrix. So we can find what's this eta here, this kind of generalized uh, phase shift. Oh, we have been talking about this, but never really implemented it. I think this has become useful because when we do try to uh, add plus U or, or, or plus DMFT into KKR, we're talking about, we have to have like a local orbitals that if your potential is a spherical, we have clear dis uh, a distinction between different L's, we have different uh, local orbitals. But if potential is a non-spherical, we lost that kind of sense. But I think what we can do here is by calculating the S matrix and we diagonalize it. And we, 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 from there, we can determine what uh, the uh, local orbital by de uh, determining what this uh, 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 generalized partial phase shift. We might be able to do something here to uh, kind of determine what's kind of generalized kind of local orbital. Then we do, we can add U or add uh, as kind of uh, effective uh, potential. Uh, I, th I think that's probably a, 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 a way to, to do it. But anyway, I just put this statement here, something we can think about. Okay, uh, so-called matrix form, uh, form, we're talking about, so the, for modeling case, we have a, a uh, T11, T22, T333. Uh, really, uh, in the uh, full potential case, we, it's generalized. It should not, should be should not be diagonal anymore. Should be in this kind of more general for, uh, uh, form. Uh, each element, T L L prime, is really really means the L M and L L prime, uh, L prime and M prime. Uh, each L is combination of L M. So you're still uh, using spherical harmonics here. I mean, the, yeah. this quantum, the, the quantum numbers are, are still corresponding to the indices of the of the spherical harmonics, right? That's right. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Uh, I, I'll tell you more about it if uh, what's happening in the, in the uh, non-spherical non case. Okay, so so we in practice, we usually will have a cutoff, but we cannot deal with like infinite large matrix. We'll have a cutoff. So up to L max, which corresponding to this, okay? Because uh, maximum um, M is L max. But when L little L takes L max, the, this little M only from negative L max to up to positive L max. So that's uh, all the terms we have. And uh, it turns out the number of columns or rows of this T matrix will be L max plus one square. Okay, you can easily uh, calculate it. It turns out that this is the kind of the size we're talking about. Uh, so we usually choose L max with three or four in practice. In the real calculation. So this is a kind of explain what the matrix form. So how to calculate T matrix? Uh, oh wow, uh, I'm, I used all my time. So for a given epsilon energy, uh, we could uh, could be it could be complex. We usually take there's two different approaches. One is called a Dyson equation approach. Uh, we will call it a Eulish approach. Uh, what it do it does is it, it calculate a regular solution of a Schrodinger equation by solving the Dyson's equation. 
which is an integral equation uh, solved iteratively. And you then use this irregular solution multiplied by the uh, uh, potential and, uh, and the multiplied by spherical Bessel function, which will give you the T matrix. That's how the T matrix is calculated by, by this group, Ulish group. Another is called a, takes called a, ver a variable phase approach, also called an Oak Ridge approach. I believe me, I think I read in literature, people sometimes call it the Bristol approach, uh, but whatever, uh, they all mean the same thing. So we calculate a regular solution, which is another regular thing but different from this regular solution by solving the Schrodinger equation with a particular boundary conditions and the origin. And then apply this regular solution to calculate the sine and cosine matrices and then calculate T matrix. Okay, this is how it's done uh, in this particular approach. Either way, they're all equivalent. We're talking about same T matrix, but different numerical implementation, different way of calculating it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so some technical details, I have to run it a little bit quick, so I don't want to bore you guys. Uh, so regular solution, how to calculate this regular solution, but in, in the Ridge, so called Oak Ridge approach, we pick up this regular solution, we, we give a boundary condition, we need the origin to be this. Why is this? Okay, uh, again, epsilon issue could be complex. The boundary condition, if this is a legit. Why I say it's a legit? Because first of all, this is a free electron solution. Okay, uh, there's a many free electron solutions in a, in a spherical coordinate. This is just one of them. Or you can put a, a Hankel function here. It's another uh, 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 free electron solution. Uh, you know, or, or Neumann function here is another uh, uh, free this, uh, this is just one of those free solutions, solution, but this J times the Y happen to be regular. It's finite at origin. Okay. So it's a, it's a, first of all, it's a free solution, solution, but we have V here, th this, how can that, we can put a regular a free solution, solution here. So the reason for that is near the origin, the dominant term is become irrelevant. The reason for that, because this uh, L plus times L plus one divided by R squared. Remember that we, we have L times L plus one divided by R square is buried in the uh, this Poisson operator. So near the origin that dominates. So this one, this term, this column term in V is no longer dominate. It's no longer irrelevant. It's not important anymore. So near the origin, the free electron solution, uh, the, the near the origin, the solution should become free electron solution. Okay, so I can, have this boundary condition that this is a regular solution I'm interested. Uh, I'm going to use J times Y to be my boundary condition. A stupid question. This is true uh, when L is not zero, but when L is zero, that's not true. That's a good question. It is still true. Uh, this is very subtle. Uh, why that is true? Uh, because when we transform that from uh, 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 into the co spherical coordinates, actually this is a delta function. It never show up in textbook. There is a delta function effect at i equal to zero. That delta function mm -hmm. dominates. Okay, that's the major reason. But unfortunately, most textbooks don't even mention that. <laughs> uh, actually, there is a few literature uh, publication that, that mention about this. But this is a kind of been buried, and nobody even paid attention <laughs> to it. Well, I remember uh, when I was a student, I took classes. They said, well, I, uh, you know, we learned scattering theory. And then they said the exception is the Coulomb scattering, which is a little bit more subtle. And then we didn't learn about it. <laughs> so, yeah. but, but anyway, yeah, not... so yeah, uh, uh, people will ask this question. Well, what, what happened to L equal to zero, right? L equal, because L times L plus one divided by R zero. But L equals zero, that term doesn't exist. Then you know, what, you know, that what I'm saying here is not valid. But actually, there's a very subtle problem here because of the Poisson operator. Uh, it has an effect mm -hmm. that this a, when i equals zero, it's never allowed. It's just like a delta function. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, anyway, so um, this, uh, uh, but the, the point is near the origin, uh, the wave function was supposed to become a free electron solution. Okay, so I pick up this as a, a boundary condition. So this is allowed. Yes, sir. So, so uh, a demonstration that what you say must be true is the fact that the hydrogen atom has a Coulomb potential like this. And we know that if the ground state is an S wave, the wave function is regular. It's just a Gaussian. It's a, not a Gaussian, it's, a, it's exponential, but it has a finite value at the, at the, at the origin, or right? Even though the potential is infinite, 
nothing bad happens to the wave function. The wave function is not smooth, right? It has the cusp. The cusp is because of your delta function, I guess, right? Uh, for the S state, uh, for S state for the hydrogen atom. This is exactly the simplest example of that, right? Okay. If you just have a hydrogen atom, that that, okay. that that's a textbook solution, oh, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so it turns out the sine and cosine matrix can be calculated from phi. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to derive this, but it's just too mathematical. But let's just accept this as a as a as a result. So sine matrix can be calculated using this way, using this phi. If you the phi is calculated this. Uh, if, by following this boundary conditions. You can, you can use this to calculate sine matrix. I'm sorry, I lost a little superscript here. And cosine matrix, it can calculate using this. This n is Neumann function, spherical Neumann function, okay? So we can calculate sine matrix and cosine matrix, then we can calculate T matrix. So this is kind of way T matrix is calculated. And, and since Marcus uh, asked me to show this slide, so I'm gonna show this numerically how this is done. So we expand the regular solution on spherical harmonics so that we can only so we only need to perform calculating on the radio grid. Uh, okay, so that's what we how we do it. Uh, this is a function of the three-dimensional function. We expand that in the spherical harmonic, but this is more general. Okay, this is not a constraint to uh, this is for full potential case. Uh, for if for for Muffendin case for potential is a spherical, then this phi become a diagonal. Okay, uh, but anyway. So we're expanding the spherical, uh, spherical harmonic, so we only deal with the radio function. Uh, so we only need to worry about the radio grid, about thousand points, uh, instead of dealing with the uh, three-dimensional uh, 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 data. So we only need to uh, store and calculate store the numbers about thousand uh, points along the radio grid. And uh, the boundary condition is that near the origin, as I, you know, from previous slide, it should look like this, okay? Should be this, this phi uh, radio function should be become a spherical Bessel function. Uh, so we can prove that uh, this satisfy this uh, couple of the differential equations. Okay, all we have to do is we just solve this a uh, couple of differential equations to figure out what phi is. Uh, this can be done. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, this v here is a potential expansion in the spherical harmonic. So a lot of quantities, three-dimensional quantities in scaling theory is we expand that in terms of a spherical harmonic so that we only need to deal with the radio functions. And the, the angular part, we just, can't, just don't worry, have, don't have to worry about it because they are being well established uh, in, in terms of spherical harmonic. Uh, we can calculate it any time uh, this kind of calculation of spherical harmonic is well established. We don't have to worry. All we have to worry about is radio functions. We can store the data in the radio grid. Okay, so B, Two for uh, full potential, right? Full potential, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for, 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 for spherical potential, then this uh, uh, ALP is zero. I see. Uh, it's the, only the, the sine and cosine matrices are not required for uh, spherical potential. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, for, uh, for, for spherical potential, then uh, the sine cosine all become diagonal. Ah, uh, okay. All become diagonal. So, yeah. so how, where does the sine and cosine come into the T matrix? I didn't understand that. Uh, how they are derived or? So uh, where does it come into the T matrix? Oh, uh, I showed in a previous slide that T matrix inverse can be written in terms of sine and cosine matrix. Okay. Yeah, I think in my uh, previous slide, I, I showed that, uh, but I didn't derive it because it, it's just too involved. Uh, we can talk about them at the time, uh, okay. how that can be derived. Yeah, but they're, they're related. I, I think I showed that uh, with, a, with a spherical case, it's quite obvious in terms of, uh, I think my, yeah, in my slide showing the spherical scattering case in terms of uh, phase, uh, partial phase uh, shift, you have a cosine and a sine okay. of the partial phase shift. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, I remember. Yeah, and then you can generalize that from cosine and sine to cosine and sine matrices. Okay, 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 yeah, I got it. Okay, so uh, so this is a V, and uh, uh, this is called a Gauss factor, which is uh, three, three spherical harmonic integration over the solid angle. So this is also well established quantity uh, uh, Gauss factors. Okay, so all these things put together 
uh, can allow you to calculate this S and cosine functions. And these two functions, actually they are related to cosine sine matrices and can be used to construct phi. Okay, so all you have to do is just solve this uh, integral equations, uh, no, no, differential equations. So you can use a uh, fourth order Adams batch force formula as predictor and the fourth order Adams Morton formula as corrector. This is kind of numerical technique in solving the uh, ordinary, ordinary differential equation. So you can integrate S and cosine functions along the radial grid. So, and then you can, in the meantime, you calculate phi. Uh, just from origin, the boundary condition is this. You can easily figure out what's the boundary condition for S and C. And uh, then you can move from origin toward outside, toward, uh, you can calculate phi. That's how it is calculated, how it is done numerically. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all for today. This is just too much, too heavy for, uh, uh, for everyone, I think. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's uh, a scaling theory in, in practice. It's kind of a di kind of difficult theory, but it's a, it's a beautiful mathematical <laughs> uh, right. theory. I, I love this, uh, Yang. Thank you very much. I mean, I'm, I'm personally rusty on all this. And, uh, but, uh, you know, and we've been working, especially with typical medium theory at the level of, of, of type binding models. I think making a connection between that language as, as Wasim pointed out. And this is, I think that's a challenge for me. And, and I, I, I think for maybe for many others mm -hmm. as well. And I think that's very useful really to understand this in some detail. Yeah. Yeah, I guess this is uh, 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 too much to, to swallow today. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm gonna stop, uh, 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 stop recording